we spoke with Amber Mace from EY about why women are the least likely adopters of VR. Hi Amber, can you tell us a little about the survey that EY conducted into virtual reality? Sure. So it was commissioned by the TMT Women's Network, uh, which is a network that supports women in the technology, media and telecoms industry. Um, there's a lot of press uh, at the moment around supporting and trying to get more women into tech um, and there's also a lot of press around um, disruptive technologies um, of which VR is one. So what we wanted to do is really combine those two themes and take a look at whether um, the virtual reality industry was equally appealing or as appealing to men as it is to women. So the survey found three main themes. Um, the first is that um, far less women had actually tried VR to date and actually materially less women were likely to try VR in the future. So of the women in the survey, only 14% of them had actually used VR versus 20% of the men. And actually over two thirds, 65% um, of the women in the survey said they were unlikely to try virtual reality in the future. So secondly, the survey found that um, those that had used VR, women tended to be uh, less impressed with virtual reality um, as an experience. So the key words describing their um, virtual reality experience was futuristic and underwhelming um, versus the male experience, um, which tended to be realistic and positive. So if you put that into a, a buying preferences, you can see why perhaps there's a difference for the male and the female population. And thirdly, the survey found that women um, tended to have, or they had materially less affinity with the, or knowledge of the key um, virtual reality brands in the market. Um, so over 63% um, of the women had not heard of the top five brands in the market and actually men uh, were found to be more than twice as likely to have heard of the brands um, across each of the brands that were listed. And why do you think more men than women are adopting virtual reality? Um, well I think what was interesting in the survey is it was clear that um, women were less likely than men to be early adopters of technology. So they're less, less likely to um, be the first people to run in and buy a new technology when it's released. Um, and the indication was that actually they'd rather wait until the use case around that technology was more clearly established. If we look at the um, most high profile marketing um, and uh, use cases for virtual reality, they've tended to resonate more with men um, than with women. And actually it's perhaps not surprising because both men and women um, had as the top use case in their view for virtual reality um, being gaming, okay. uh, which is perhaps historically more of a male pastime um, and resonated less with women. Um, I think there are a lot of potential other exciting use cases for virtual reality, whether it's tourism, communications, uh, movies and entertainment but perhaps the message around those um, hasn't got out in quite the same way as gaming has to date. So what can be done to encourage more women to start using this kind of technology? Uh, well at the back of our survey we included three questions for businesses to consider um, when they're looking at marketing VR. Uh, so the first is around um, how do you make sure that you're appealing to a broader audience. So if we think about the survey at the moment there does seem to be a bit of a disconnect um, between um, where people, where women see the, mo the highest use case for virtual reality being in gaming but also where they see themselves most likely to use virtual reality being in movies and entertainment. So I think something needs to be done around that disconnect going forward. Um, in, a different, in addition, whether businesses are actually targeting a, a broad enough um, audience mix when they're commissioning VR content so I think there, you know, if we look at movies and entertainment, women were, were very keen and saw that as a high potential area for virtual reality. But actually at the moment, the content is pretty limited around movies and entertainment. I think that's changing in the industry. We are seeing a lot of TV companies partnering with um, tech startups around VR. 
So as long as the content that gets produced um, is very diverse in nature, then that could be a real turning point for virtual reality. And then finally, we ask people to think about um, how do you balance the uh, investment and marketing around the technology and the innovation versus the use case. I mentioned that women are far more interested in the use case um, than actually in the technology itself. So perhaps we need a more um, diverse investment into the use case for virtual reality. So women saw lots of opportunity. I've mentioned movies and entertainment before, but also tourism um, and travel and um, communications. Perhaps we could see more investment in those areas. It seems to me that if the industry could find some form of killer app with a clear um, entertainment or everyday use that brought with it um, a whole load of additional users, then actually then um, virtual reality could become more of a mainstream than it is today. Brilliant. Thanks for joining us. No problem.